Okay, so I'm currently recording. So you can continue. Oh, sorry, precious. We don't catch your introduction, but don't worry, don't worry. All of us we've mastered it in our heads. Sorry about that. <laughs> you can continue, Hamza. All right. So, uh, my name is Hamza, and I'm from Kano, Nigeria. I'm a open source advocate. Uh, uh, I'm also a chapter lead at uh, Open Source Community Africa, and I do front end. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. How is Kano at this time? Oh, Kano is very rainy these days. Oh, so cold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Hi, Iga. The floor is for you now. Hi, everyone. Hi, good evening. My name is Iga. Plain Iga. I do a lot of things. Yeah, chaos. And I'm happy to be here and meet, re-meet everybody in this working that group. That's the kind of thing that you do. What do you mean you do a lot of things? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we regards to accessibility. See, oh, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> Sorry now, I just, try. I just, I just do accessibility audits here and there. Um, on our GitHub, we have, Toya has worked on a couple of things. One of the things that we need to do is create issues and stuff. But yeah, Toria, don't put this spotlight on me, please. Kindly <laughs> take the spotlight <laughs> back. <laughs> That's okay. I'll try my best. Hi, everybody, friend. It would be nice for the new members to get to know you. Oh, sure. She's on transit. Okay, you can just maybe just um type. And I'll read it out later. So... The botoxin, which is crazy, though. <laughs> you got oh, let me it, ah, you guys hear yeah, God? Did I forget? <laughs> what did I forget? How is it? Is it recorded? Is it? <laughs> yeah, please help me. I I can't be speaking. I mean, I mean, I mean, let's help. I'm going to share the link to the minutes. For this meeting in the chat, please, you guys, write your names. Um, yeah. So, introduction. Um, Toria, I am a contributor here at Chaos Accessibility, and part of this working group. And we are working to um bridge the gap in the inclusion disability in disability and inclusion in open source. So um so I'm going to pretty much do a an introduction to what we've been doing so far. We recently hosted, I would say very recently, but we hosted an event in June. We're already in September. Why wow, it's already three months. I mean, yeah, three, four months now. We also had an event in June and it was a very, it was amazing and successful event where we reached out to people with disabilities and we introduced open source to them because they actually had the knowledge um, of tech in a way. Like you needed to be there. Yiga was there, Winifred was there. It was amazing. They were very interactive. They enjoyed the event. Their disabilities were not in a hindrance to communication. Even people who were um, deaf attendees were able to sign their opinions and the translator gave us what it was. Even the blind user as well was able to answer. They were really, really interactive. So it was amazing, right? And we figured if open source is building products in the open for the public, it is supposed to be accessible and what is accessibility without including the people you are building for who are the people who have the disabilities themselves right which is why we are trying to open up the open source space for people with disabilities that's literally a summary and after that we've had so many great innovations brian winifred i think 
peculiar at the time was also part of our plan our um core organizers during the event it was amazing we brought ideas that made the event a success right and we don't want to stop there we want to now incorporate it now <clears throat> do like some sort of feedback and get those people who uh, were so interested in the session to actually join chaos community because we have so much to do given that you can implement accessibility in so many areas in open source, whether it's your a developer, whether you're a designer, whether you're a technical writer, a community manager, whatever it is you're doing, contributing to open source, even if it's documentation, even if it's to put full stop or attend meetings or facilitate meetings, whatever it is, you have a role to play in inclusion, right? And we are trying to make this chaos um, community inclusive so that these people can actually join and enjoy contributing to open source, which is why our working group literally exists. Last week, we talked about, well, I did not attend to the agenda. Oh, my bad. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, okay, so last week, we talked about things we can include to improve the, access, the um, inclusion and accessibility of open source in chaos. And one of them was including accessibility in the upcoming October Fest. We all know what October Fest is and when it usually happens. If you don't know, I'm sure everybody here knows. I'm very, very sure. But just in case, October Fest is an open source festival or event that usually happens on the month of October where you will have the opportunity to make a lot of contributions. And sometimes you win prizes like mesh, um, have your, have a, a, a plant, um, yeah, a, a plant or a tree planted in your name and so on and so forth, right? Um, I'm sure there are other benefits. You can check it out later. So we're looking to include um, people um, accessibility and inclusion in the coming upcoming October first. I'm looking to do this by including accessibility repos on whatever um, October repo we are going to be putting out in October, right? And we actually do have plans to because we had like a, a leadership meeting today with Ruth, and we had plans to we have plans to actually um host a workshop first because a lot of people are interested in this disability working group and accessibility but might not know how they can help because we've had people who want to join us in auditing and all of that and it's a case of okay I really want to help out but I don't know how to help out right so we have plans to host the workshop first hopefully before October 1st Right, so that every working group can have like an insight on how they can contribute to open source and be prepared for October Fest. Right. So I think that's like an action item we have in plan. I don't know, Iga, maybe you want to add that, like host a workshop before the October Fest. Um October Fest, not first, yeah, first. Yeah, October Fest. That we have a blog post that we are yet to finish. Oh my God. See, <laughs> all of us have a lot of workload. So, and we, we, are, we are still getting new members. So we are hoping that when there are new members, more people will be interested to contribute. But we have blog posts pending from the event. We're supposed to like publish a blog post for the concluded event in June. And that is still, still pending. That is partly my fault. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to work with Brian and Winifred to just finish it up. That is one thing we have pending. We would have put it out there as a repo, but it's specifically for people who actually attended the um event because it's basically a summary of details in the event. I think Brian is here. Is he here? 
Exacto. He's not here. He just replied me that it's like he forgot about our meeting. Okay, so that's it so far. These are the things that we are currently working on. Right? These are the things that we are currently trying to work on. So obviously for the October 1st, we will not start making preparations, creating repos for and um, planning repos to create for the upcoming is next month we're already in september is next month right so creating and uh, arranging repos the workshop should be before october first and we also have plans in the future because immediately after the event minifred brian myself and a few other people that join in the meeting i think lamy at the time we had to make goals of what we are looking to achieve in the rest of the six months right i think winifred made a few suggestions as well so you can go through the minutes just to like get a summary just to catch up yeah so this october first is one of it another goal we're looking to achieve is to involve more african countries who are contributing to chaos africa to join our working group because we're looking to make the in the inclusion global starting with african countries so currently we have like three or four african countries that are actively contributing to chaos i think nigeria kenya um uganda and angola these are the ones i know i don't know if any Ghanaian is contributing but these are for the people i currently know <clears throat> So we're looking to get them all involved. Elizabeth also said something about merging Asia. Oh, someone's hand is up. Oh, hi, Hamza. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. I was away because I was like on the document. Okay, do sorry. You have a question? Uh, yeah, I do have a question and some observations as well. Okay. So, like, um, all you have been all you have been saying regarding the plans in the disability working group was kind of a coincident to in our plans what we what we are trying to do here at the open source community Africa Summit. So, so uh, this month, uh, just last month, we were able to to fully to officially onboard uh, people living with disability in our community in order to adopt diversity and inclusion. Uh, we have uh, two member, two people from uh, uh, living with having a visual impairment who are very technical and uh, literate enough to be onboarded into our community as well. So, and then we are thinking of, uh, we are planning with our partners later this month to host a physical event regarding that uh to fully educate them about open source projects and uh, open source education in general. And then we want to participate in the October 1st coming, uh, I think next month, right? Yeah. Was it November or October? October, sorry, I forgot. So it was like kind of amazing that I, that I see like all the plans like it was a blueprint of our plan. I was like, uh, Turia, let me let me confirm whether was was this a chaos meeting or was it uh Oscar Kano meeting? <laughs> Sorry about that. So basically we are planning to host a physical event for people living with disability in order to educate them about what open source is and open source in general. And then we onboard two members of them last month. Thank you. I yield the mic. Oh, that is so amazing. Like, see, I'm giving you a round of applause right now. Like, this is so amazing. Um, thank you so much for adding this for this contribution. This is a great innovation. So I want to ask, is there a way chaos can partner with you on this? Yeah. 
Yeah, the last time that I spoke about this betrothed, she says like uh, the room is always open when the part when we need the partnership, and I think uh, the right time is here. Okay, great. So I will reach out to her following the end of this meeting as like a um a feedback. Right, so I let her know yeah. since you already you've already told her before. I let her know because it's a, it's amazing. Chaos is looking to collaborate with more physical events for people with disabilities and broadening the community. Right, so I'll yeah. speak to her and we'll look for way ways to collaborate with you. Have you people made plans on when the event is going to be and all of that? Have you concluded on that? Yeah, we have concluded that uh, it's going to be 26th of this month. Oh, wow, that's pretty close, but that's okay. I'll still tell her and then hear what she has to say. That's yeah. three weeks, three weeks from today, roughly. Yeah, three weeks. Okay, so I will give her a feedback and I will get back to you. Oh, that is so amazing. Thank um. You. Another round of applause for you because it's a big deal. It's a big deal having to be inclusive in events. Right. So that is great. Um so does anybody have any Sorry. contribution? Yes, please. Just one, just one observation, Toria. So uh the last time that I the last time that I worked with uh, I work with the British Council on a particular project which has a similar mission. It's called uh, Skills and Digital Inclusive, where we train uh, we train people living with disabilities about how they can be safe online and how they can navigate digital world. So, and then during the training, I was told that when those people are around, you don't call them, you don't address them by their disability. For example, if someone has visual impediment, so you, you can't tell him, you can't call him a blind man in the presence who, in order for them to feel welcome. And these are the kind of terms that I, that I, that I, that, that really got my attention. That That's why I even raised my hand to call your attention to like um calling them people living with disability when they are around, not calling them with their own uh, f uh physical disability. It's a it's a standard that uh, British Council enforces. Okay, so don't you don't call them people with disability. You call them maybe names specific to their own disability, or you call them by their name. Which one is it? Did you did you understand what I said? Am I going off? Am I? Can anybody hear me? I can't hear you. Sorry, sorry, my mic was muted. So, I uh, so so what I'm trying to say, for example, if I'm blind, you can say you can address me by my name, or you cannot address me by that blind man. Oh, oh, okay, yes, yes, on, yeah, on yeah, that yeah. So yeah, that's the standard that British Council try to enforce. Okay. And uh, when we when we when we try when we survey regarding that, and then those people living with disability kind of feel comfortable when when you don't call them with their disability. For example, it's kind of it's kind of, it's going to be very weird to address him as a cripple, something like that. Or so in a nutshell, you we use people living PWDs when they are around. In short, okay. there is people living with disabilities. Okay. Yeah. That makes Thank sense. So can we, like, is it possible to organize this into a sensitivity training? Because before our event in June, there was a sensitivity training for attendees and organizers, right? Where they are yeah, yeah, yeah. I try as much as I can to attend that because it's it was organized somewhere around sustainability. So I was thinking that I'm going to kill two birds with one stone by attending uh sustain and uh, chaos disability working group meeting physical meetup, and then all of a sudden sustain was cancelled. So it was postponed rather. So from that case, I can't meet up to Lagos. 
but nevertheless i i will be going through the previous meeting note and see what did i miss so i to back to back to your question i think yeah the sensitivity sorry what do you call sensitivity orientation? yeah sensitivity training is it possible for yeah. your community to organize one Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that because our um, our upcoming meeting was was tailored around uh, um uh we're bringing open source education to people living with disability. Oh, amazing! This is really amazing. So, like I said, I will reach out to Ruth and I'll get back to you because this is really what we want to do: collaborate more with people communities for people with disabilities and invite them to join the open source space. All right. So before I continue, we what we have on the agenda, which is actually almost finished. Does anybody have an addition? Hi Precious, do you have anything to add? Um, not really, but I found this report that um all in open source did on um DAI, so I shared it in the chat. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Brian is here. Hi, Brian. <laughs> oh yeah, he said it's on Ruth. A bit. Roots, I be in transit. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, <laughs> are you are you away from the road now? Ah, I'm away from the road. I'm away from transit. I'm away from traffic. How are you doing? We're fine. We're fine. See, we have new members. Can you see we have new members? Yeah, I'm seeing Hamza. I'm seeing Giga. I'm seeing Precious. Uh, thank you so much for the but Yiga hand is up, so maybe you can listen to Yiga. Hi, Yiga. Hi, hi, Toria. <laughs> so it's so funny. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to share that we have we have the repo, we have the accessibility repo. I don't know if the team knows about it. We we'll have an answer. Let me share it in the chat. I just wanted to put it out there. So we we do have a repo where stuff like the spreadsheet and stuff. So maybe Victoria might talk more on it. I just wanted to bring it up as part of things to talk about on the agenda. No, no, it's fine. Continue, continue, my dear. Continue. You can come. You can talk about it. <laughs> you can you can finish the talk about it. Okay, so, <laughs> so yeah, okay, but yeah, um, so there's an accessibility report that's where stuff like has been like work has been going on and stuff. Um, Toria has worked on a lot of things, and the spreadsheet basically mostly accessibility auditing, right? So, um, I think we need to just take next steps. Right, what are we doing next? We can also use this report for communication for easier communication to make stuff more um open. So I just thought to share it with all of us again, like bring it up our timelines again. Okay? I'm not talking so much to you, I don't expect you to talk plenty. <laughs> don't worry, you you've already You've already said more than enough. Thank you very much. So yes, guys, we we actually started with accessibility audits. And we had to pause on it because we figured out that a lot of people found it kind of difficult to actually integrate integrate accessibility in the tech in their code. All right, just like okay. How do we do this exactly? Which is why we are proposing the workshop. It's going to help people know how to actually propose, um, sorry, integrate accessibility in codes, in designs, in writing, so that the audits may 
can be corrected and implemented, right? So we look forward to using that ripple. I be using the ripple for the Hacktober Fest. What do you think, Iga? So I'm even thinking we can use the ripple for for everything that we're doing you know initially we we did not have a focus focus group meeting like this we're still part of the dei right so and that means that a lot of things now like have changed so i'm thinking i don't know it's up to the whole team do we want to just leave but it's a whole repo so it's it's supposed to be like a working group kind of thing right as opposed to like an issue. So we can actually use it for everything and anything related to accessibility under chaos. We just have to create issues under it like we would normally do. So that's what I think. I don't know what the rest of the team thinks. I agree with you too. I agree with you too. I, I even think we should probably maybe adjust the name if it's possible. So maybe include um say disability inclusion and accessibility repo so it's more inclusive so it can actually include uh more stuff than specific accessibility more inclusion stuff okay um i'll i'll do that another thing is you know when we change the name it's going to affect every other thing so but i'll do that i don't think yeah it's going to affect every other thing yeah, it's going to affect like other files, like. But let's see what we can do. <laughs> if we change the name and something is wrong, we'll change it back now, Abby. Right, so, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but I'll just try. I'll just try. Then um, the other thing also is um, we have new contributors, so it would also be nice to really add people to the repo as well, right? Because then it was just of us so we can just add more people to the repo so if we can drop our github usernames it would be nice right so that everybody is actively contributing you know there as well as on slack so that's what i was thinking thank you thank you so much Higa. that's amazing does anybody um Brian says he agrees. Does any other person agree with the idea? Precious, Hamza, Winifred. Are we all good? Okay. Hamza, hey. Do you think it's a good idea? Someone's hands is up. Hi Brian. <laughs> Hi, Hi Brian. Brian. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like it's a good idea, but I'm also thinking of one of the challenges we've had lately with our new contributors, which is most of them are not coming from the technical aspect of it, or even if they are technical, like you know things like GitHub and you know such such things, they are new to them. I'm not sure about the experience you had during the, the event there physically, but even if I try to onboard new people here in Kenya, that would be the case. Either they are not technical or they are, yes, they are technical, but they don't have like like really high technical expertise. So I was just thinking, do we have like a quick start guide for the auditing? Like if someone wants to start auditing, I can go and read it. For example, like me, myself, I do code, yes. But if I want to start doing auditing, I'm like, okay, where do I start? Like, do we have a quick start guide? And then how do I go about it? Maybe we can we can say we can decide to work maybe on a on a recording of how to go about it. Probably this exists because I've not been on that side of chaos. Probably this exists, but those are just some of my thoughts on it. What do you think, Yiga? And 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 Tori, since you've been part of that side for a longer time. Yeah, I think this was also the issue we used to face at the time when we were <laughs> when we were auditing. People would be like, You got can you teach us? Tori, can we learn? <laughs> so okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this 
it and we have not been able to answer because we personally myself and Yiga we found it a challenge because teaching people how to audit from scratch was it felt like a challenge given that we had a lot of tax to do a lot of work to do but i think the the document the document might be important the question now is how do we draft that where do we start from right because <laughs> it's a whole course <laughs> it's a whole course on <laughs> its own learn how do we you get like for you to be able to perform all this as if you have like a certification you know or something like that so mm. that's that was actually our concern and again for well, you to be able to like okay you want to say something i don't know i'm just i'm just following along your your thought process so what i was what i could add there is what you can do is you can have like a like a let's say I, I think I can I can help you work on this because I think I've I've worked on some quick start guides before for some folks. This is what we do in our community. We had this problem. Let me explain what we did and then we, we can think if we can do it here. So we had a problem where we kept repeating beginner content because every time we start let's say a new semester, we have beginners. So we have to start all the way from scratch and then carry them. So every time we are ending the semester, we're doing expert content. But every time we come back another semester, we have to start with beginner content. And it was like really tiresome because we are really lagging along behind and we have to do other things. So we decided to to like come up, start like documenting what has already happened. So like, let's say if you want to start, first of all, take time and do this course, do this, do this and do this. And then now, Pair, we'll pair you with someone else. Let's say, for example, we will pair you with Yiga and then assign you two tasks that will be done under Yiga's mentorship. And then once you finish what has been done there, you can now start doing what we do currently, which is like kind of expertish, like like the way you're saying the, the accessibility is like kind of, you need a certificate for it. And then we also came up with what we call um, office hours. So like we say like every Tuesdays, We'll be meeting the whole of this of this working group, or let's say the whole of yeah, it was like a, just a small community. We'll be meeting uh, as a data science team to just work together. So if you are doing a beginner thing, if you are doing an expert thing, or you're doing anything, so during that office hours, you can ask a question, you can do anything, and then we'll go into breakout rooms. So what do you think? Can that work here? Like have a place where you have quick start guide where you start from here. Once you finish this content, we pay with someone, then you can start auditing. Do you think that's possible or is it something that's too ambitious? I don't know. I can hear from you folks. <laughs> too, he said too ambitious. Well, two truths can crazy. It is ambitious and it is an interesting idea. Iga. Yeah, thank you, Toria. So I just wanted to chip in, right? That that was something that i was also thinking of because for other open source communities one thing that we do is have onboarding guides right it's not that the general so the way that chaos is doing like onboarding um courses that's totally different but like simple documentation because if you keep by the time you get new members and you try to onboard people all over again, you know, individually, they'll be born out, like Brian said, heavy burnout, and you would really not be able to do that. But so for the onboarding guide, just a simple documentation. An example, we can also even put it directly on the README. So if you look at the README.md of the accessibility um, repo, you would see even courses at the bottom. Right, you see at the bottom, want to learn more about accessibility, here are some courses to guide you. But then this, we can even attach the onboarding guide there, right? So I liked what Brian said, is that something about, you know, pairing people and making it easier, right? So another idea that can even work will be, you know, um, them joining you live while you're um, doing this accessibility audits, right? It can just be a thing, right? Just to help people. And of course it might even be like a recorded session so that people can also go back and watch it. So those are ideas on ways that we can try to make it better. 
However, it's best practice for people to just. <laughs> I'm the one talking. I cannot be taking notes at the same time. <laughs> okay. So, oh my god! Do you know that I forgot? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm so I can multitask for the life. Like when it comes to talking and Bro. writing, I can't do Thank it for you. the life of me. <laughs> okay. So it's best practice to even if so we know that some of the learning about accessibility auditing is a bit expensive. However, you can audit the courses. Do you understand? So you can uh -huh. audit the course, have that knowledge, even if you don't have that certification. Then when you have the money, you can pay for the certification. But you can uh -huh. actually audit the course on EDX. But I don't think if you audit the course, you'll be able to take the test, right? There's also yeah, stuff. You can actually read up online, yes, to understand what it's like. The other thing that we can also do is to make people more engaged. Um, we've already done some accessibility auditing. So um, we could create issues, right? Simple starter issues that will just help and maybe do it in batches. So maybe if it's a design issue, we create design issues so that people can work on it, right? So that even if they are not able to do actual accessibility audits, but because they want to do something on accessibility or disability, um, they would be working. It's just like when you say, oh, regardless of what you do, even if it's note taking during the meeting, you're contributing already to open source. Do you understand? So their yeah, contributions do not necessarily have to be accessibility auditing, right? They can, maybe it can be, a designer that has interest in accessibility and making the, their designs more accessible and they can work on the yeah. design that needs to be more accessible. So in that way, they have also contributed to accessibility. So it's very broad and different people can do different things. So I think it should be more open and it should not just um, narrow it down, just audit. So thank you. Sorry, yeah. Don't make me talk again. Thank you so much. See, that's amazing. See, that's why I always like to have bigger in meetings. But let me hold that thought. Brian. <laughs> Hi. You raise your hand. Hi. So uh I even had an idea. I think Toria Toria will understand this better. But we're also trying to look at ways that we can incentivize our contributors. Like, how can we appreciate people who are actively contributing? So we can decide that you can be giving causes, you can be giving like vouchers to that, a coupon, let's say, to that, to that certification of accessibility auditing. Let's say we see someone has been consistently contributing and that coupon can be given to like two people, three people, uh, just to give them like just to give them motivation on doing that and also like just to also show that people at Chaos Africa, I mean, we know what we are doing. We are not here, we're not joking here. Like we have <laughs> certified folks in our midst. So when we talk, we know what you're talking about. When you invite us to an event as accessibility in Nigeria, <laughs> you know, yeah, we know we are certified. I know, right? So yeah. that is something we can also think. How much is the how much is the is the cost of it, and then how can we pay? Because I I was just came in because when I was part of the embedded learning challenge mentors, we we could pay co for courses for our mentors in at EDX, and we partnered with Google for social with GitHub for social impact, and another and Google for grow with Google, and they are the ones who are giving us those incentives. So I'm like I can even reach to GitHub for social impact. Because I think and talk to them and say like if this is a is an initiative they are willing to also be part of. I don't know. Oh yeah. Me, what is you guys? Nothing is too small for chaos to do. That's what I just want to tell you. Nothing is too small because when I tell exactly. you, what is like fancy? <laughs> EDX is. I think EDS was. 200 and something dollars at the time when I got my certification. So, yeah, but nothing is too small for chaos. <laughs> nothing, you gotta be. Girl, nothing. Yeah. That certificate is about, no, 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 no. Toria, it's $99. 
So in Nigerian Naira, it's like hundred and something thousand Naira. That's okay, which one was 200? Wait, am I getting yeah. it all? See, trust it's me, it's these things are expensive. The license that is 200, I'm sorry. Yeah. It was $99. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So in Nigeria oh, money, it's right. <laughs> Yeah, lots of money, mm. it's plenty, but like I said, it's more challenge for chaos. That's a chaos, no fee run. You go run now for this chaos, we will run it. Nothing is too small for them, but it's a good idea. It's a good idea. We can even, but the good thing is, you can actually apply for scholarship and they'll give you up to 70 to 50 percent discounts. And maybe with that, you can now work with the um paying the rest for them for the certification so i mean financial scholarship yeah. oh yeah so we, they can do that they can apply oh, yeah. for financial, like financial scholarship. Scholarship. oh my god you got <laughs> oh, okay but, but that is really nice so these are really good ideas that you are having on board and I even I also wanted to add something else. I think I I had uh, Yiga mentioned this before, but yes. Uh, what what maybe I would say is we we were, we were to come up with goals for this this like this working group, and then now we can pitch those goals to other working groups and see how they are connecting with other working groups, and then now see if there is. And also in the previous, I think was it which meeting did we have, and we are looking at a report that was saying we can sunset some other working groups at Chaos Africa. Like some other working groups exist, but they would do a better job if they were merged with other working groups. So I think that can be a good thing so that we can merge the auditing and the disability mainstreaming working group to be one working group. And then we can have, we can even do more together. So I'm just looking at all those ideas, but I feel like we are six minutes to the top of the hour. So I can, we can continue the discussion. And then in the next meeting, probably, we can continue the conversation on Slack. Yeah, I think I agree with you. So I think action, action items are uh, the next thing now. What is um an immediate action we are to take? What do we need to figure out later? For action item, I think um one reach out to oh yeah, let me use one minute to fill you in, but Brian. Maybe you go back to the recordings and check it out. But Hamza was here and Hamza says um Oscar Kano is trying to host a physical event for people with disabilities to join open source. And I asked him if it is possible for Chaos to collaborate with Oscar. And he said, yes, it's possible that Ruth says whenever they are ready, they should reach out. So I'm going to be reaching out to Ruth to tell her that they've concluded and see if it's possible for us to partner with them. He said the event is September 23rd. Yeah, that was one minute. Wow, I'm good. <laughs> so, action items. One. Um, also, the Kenya meetup. We're also going to have another meetup in Kenya. So you can also add oh, that in that's the action amazing. Item. That's amazing. Have you picked the date for it yet? No, we haven't picked the date, but rest assured, uh, we go random for that event. Eh? Huh. <laughs> we are teaching Brian Pete, and I like this. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. So we can add that to the action We're item. We're making our well. meetings accessible. <laughs> yeah, accessible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that. Uh. The blog post, please. Brian, after this meeting, I'll be your dear. Let's just round this up. Really, Fred, you too. I'll be your dear. Let's just finish this and publish it. That will be free. We'll all be free. Um, so for the October first, we'll start like figuring out the kind of rep the kind of tax we want to be in our repo, what will be our first issue. Maybe we can write that down and discuss it in our next meeting. What kind of issues we want to our first issue. Is it first? Good issue. Am, am I saying it right? Oh my god. Somebody help me, please. Do you mean good first issue? Good first issue. See, why am I calling it differently? <laughs> good first issue. 
good first issue. Thank you, precious. So that we'll figure out what our good first issue is for beginners who are just joining into the accessibility team. And then the one that may probably involve accessibility audit. Then another action item, the document you talked about. I don't know how soon do we want it? When is it going to be ready? Hi, Yiga. Hi, Yiga. Sorry, I like how you're laughing. <laughs> I really just <laughs> I like how you're laughing because it's a recorded call. See, hi, Toria. <laughs> thank you that man so that's all i got uh-huh. please two minutes for what for what opinions before we call it tonight i think i do have any opinion i would love to hear from precious and to be any- oh i think winifred is on transit i don't know if she can speak now but hi winifred The silence probably means she's typing and she cannot speak. Hi, Precious. Anything you would like to say before we call it a nine? Hi. Um, not really. I will just uh watch the accessibility report and get acquainted with it. I guess. Can anybody hear me? Drop your GitHub usernames. Please. Yes, we can, can hear you. Yeah, 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 I cannot remember my GitHub username, but I'll... Okay, we'll drop the username on Slack if that works. So it can... Yeah, so yes, this meeting yes. will soon end. Yeah, so on Slack. Yeah, perfect. Yes, I only omitted. I'm just getting to my own. I only omitted so that I can hear my voice. Oh, we like your voice. Thank That's you for so meeting. Cool. <laughs> we are taking piano lessons. That's cool. Yes, my teacher is waiting for me right now in my house. So I want to go and answer. Yeah. Winnie does really cool stuff, you guys. You know, I'm like, when I grew up, when I grew up. <laughs> she's she's our role model like this. Because of piano lessons, my brain wants <laughs> yes, to rest. No. But I'm going to play piano. <laughs> oh, God. It's seven already. The call should be ending soon. Oh, I don't know if it's automatic or time, but I guess we'll have to like end it here. See you guys in two weeks. Looking forward to being in everybody's DM, like I always am. <laughs> it's up for two Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.